Good morning. Welcome to All My Good Ideas Were Taken. I'm Victoria. Thanks so much for coming to my channel. Today I want to share with you a pattern that I love. You may have seen knitted and crocheted hand uh, washcloths. Um, this is a knitted one. It's kind of small. Very simple, easy to do, very useful. Here's some others. This is a knitted one. Very basic pattern. And these square cloths are really nice. I like them. However, I found a pattern that I love more than all the others. This one. It's circular and has these little points on them. I just love it. It's quick and easy to do and uh, they're, they're larger and well they're the same thickness but I really love this pattern so I'm going to share this with you today. The pattern will be in the description below um, and let's get started. Okay, the supplies you're going to need are, of course, yarn. Um, I make mine out of cotton yarn. You can use any kind of yarn you would like. However, if you're going to make these and use them as hot pads in your kitchen, you need to make them out of cotton. Um, regular yarn has rayon in it and acrylic, maybe not rayon, just acrylic, has acrylic in them. And I have heard of instances where the hot pad melted in the hand because the acrylic got too hot. So if you're going to use them as hot pads, either for pulling pots out or for setting pots on, you need to use cotton yarn. So um, I, I use them for washcloths in the kitchen sometimes, so acrylic or cotton is fine. Um, I just choose to use all cotton yarn because I like the way it feels better. I apologize for my scratchy throat. I'm having some allergy issues. <clears throat> so at any rate, don't be intimidated by this pattern. It looks like it would be complicated, but I assure you it is super simple. I'll break it down for you in just a minute. Okay, so yarn. Now this yarn, um, you, you can get cotton yarn at Walmart and Joann's. Uh, Joann's. Um, there's a couple of different brands. These two, um, my label, I don't know where the label went. These are Lily Peaches and Cream. Uh, there's a picture you should be seeing right now. And they're 100% cotton. Um, and they're small little skeins. They're perfect size to make two, or two, I think you can get two dishcloths out of one skein. I can't remember. Anyway, they're not, it's really nice and handy. This is also cotton yarn and you can buy skeins like this at Walmart. I can't remember the brand. I want to say it said peaches and cream, but it wasn't Lily peaches and cream. Doesn't matter. Either way, it comes in a bunch of different colors. This one was given to me um, and I just haven't done anything with it yet, but it's quite a lot of yarn. Um, so you could get a ton of stuff out of this. A ton of washcloths. So at any rate, that's the yarn you need. You need knitting needles, um, size 8. And if you look here, if you'll focus on the end of these needles, they say size 8. Yeah. And you can use straight needles. I have some short. I don't have any long ones to compare. Um, I don't like super long knitting needles so I buy the shorts. Um, and believe it or not these are short. Or you can use a circular knitting needle. Ooh. I just threw it on the floor. Um, you can use a circular knitting needle. I have size 8 in both a metal needle and a bamboo needle and I'm gonna lay the metal needle aside because basically it's the same thing as using this metal needle. Um, for beginning knitting I recommend bamboo needles whether they're straight or circular because with knitting with uh, these aluminum needles you'll be knitting and because you're not used to how to hold your needles and what pressure to apply where the needle will just slip straight out of your hand and out of your stitches and that can be a problem sometimes the bamboo 
holds the yarn really well and it it slides when you want it to slide and not before so you might try bamboo needles and just because they're connected I don't know how well you can see it they have a connecting cable that doesn't mean anything we're knit we are not knitting in the round this is a straight flat project you can use circular needles for flat projects um, you, when you get to the end of the row you just turn your work and go on just like you would with regular needles I'm gonna use bamboo needles for this project because number one I don't want the needle to slip out number two um, I don't have a lot of space right here and knitting with these might be problematic so not gonna use the metal ones although I do love them so okay yarn knitting needle you'll need a darning needle for the end when we weave in the tail of the project so any darning needle will work anything that you're your any type of needle really but a darning needle is usually best um, and a pair of scissors any scissors will do all right put that stuff to the side I'm gonna use this little half skein hopefully it'll be enough I rolled it up on a paper towel I mean a toilet paper roller um, because I used to have a paper towel holder that stands on the counter and I found that if I you know because when you're knitting or crocheting you have to pull yarn off and then set it down and work on your project then you have to pick it up and pull more yarn well I took my paper towel holder and I set it on the table beside me and I put the toilet paper on it the roller and then you can just pull the yarn as you need it it comes off super easy that is why it's on a paper towel roller so I don't know I moved and I lost my toilet paper roller so it's on a it's just gonna be on the table at any rate that's neither here nor there so let's get started all right this pattern starts with a cast on 14 stitches now I'm going to do a long what they call a long tail cast on normally you just have a little tail like about this much and you start your stitching I mean make your slip stitch and then you start casting on your stitches in whatever manner you choose I like a long tail I don't know why I just do so we need a fair amount of yarn for a long tail uh, that should I think that should be enough all right so we need to get our slip stitch so hold hold the business end here yarn go across your two fingers under back up and cross over and then hold it here okay you see that again over your fingers under across and then down here and pinch it you just want to hold it steady for a minute now you're going to take your knitting needle and put it under this right here grab that and pull it off the fingers see that now you pull sorry pull the tail pull on the tail and it shortens your your, your uh, slip stitch so let's do it all again sorry let me keep it in frame inside just like that grab it and pull it out once you get the hang of it you'll do it real fast and it won't make that huge loop all right now now you want to have your tail to the front 
working yarn to the back and put your like this grab the yarn um, two fingers in can you see that and then grab both underneath so you're holding it like this see that And now you have kept one stitch already. We're going to cast on 14. So we have one. Go under this one. Over this one. Back through. And let it. See that? Under this one over this one and back out and then you take your thumb out of the loop and do that give them a little tug to tighten it up let's get it up here where you can see what I'm doing under over and back through Under, over, and back through. I'll turn some other lights on in here because it's it's kind of an overcast day. Let's see if this helps a little bit. Yep, that's a little bit better. All right. All right. <clears throat> okay, we're going to do this for a total of 14. We already have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to keep going. Seven, eight, nine, hold on, I slipped it, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14. All right. So you can see individual stitches on the hook, on the needle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, now we're going to turn. Now we're going to start knitting. This uses a basic knit stitch all the way through. We're going to knit stitches, drop stitches, not, not drop, I'm sorry, cast off, and increase. But don't worry, it's super easy. Let me explain what I was saying earlier about it being so easy. Let me use this one. This one is, uh, I ran out of yarn and I used up the last of this yarn so if you look at this yarn this uh, washcloth here you can clearly see the sections right here I'm gonna use this yarn to draw the line An angle sort of right there that is one section it is done a section at a time you make this whole section and then this whole section and this whole section and you go around and it's all one piece and then at the very end when you get done you join them together so we're gonna start making this section right here let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that better okay. 
So, maybe I hope that helps explain things. I don't know. At any rate, let's get to it. All right, so. <clears throat> In knitting and crochet, you always have your tail, your beginning tail and your ending tail. And you usually have to weave those in when you're all done. Well, at the end, we'll have a tail to weave in, but I'm gonna weave this tail as I work. You'll see. Take both strands. We're gonna knit with both sides, both parts, the main yarn and the tail. So here's what you do. Basic knit stitch. Put your needle through right there. It's gonna, it's gonna make a space for you when you do it. Right there, through the, so they're both in the same loop. Does that make sense? Both needles are in that same stitch. Now take your yarn and bring it over the top of the bottom needle. Now take your bottom needle and be careful, don't you don't want to pull it all the way out because you'll lose your stitch. Take that bottom needle and bring it up with that yarn on it and it makes a new stitch. And then slip the old stitch off. You just made your first knit stitch. Now we're going to do it again. Right there. Over the top like that. Through to the front. And off the back needle. Now don't pull things too tightly. You'll end up with such tight knitting they won't even slide on the needle. Try to be relaxed about it, but not too relaxed. You'll figure it out as you go. Now, you'll see what I'm getting here. It looks like I have two stitches in one. That's because I've got the tail in there with it. This is really one stitch right here. You'll, you'll see when we come to them that it's gonna be one stitch, not two. And we're gonna knit all the way to the end. And that'll be the first row. The cast on row doesn't usually count as your first row. Just keep going. If you need to pause the video and back up and redo the stuff, go right ahead. I'll be here when you get ready. Now, I'm going to drop the tail. <clears throat> the purpose of doing this is you have to weave in the tail so that your work doesn't unravel. So this tail has now been twisted through all of these stitches. If I cut it off right here, it will not unravel ever. So we're going to drop the tail and ignore it. And continue on. Same as we were. And there we go. You just knitted your first row. Now see, in circular needles, we finished the row. We're gonna turn, and with straight needles, this is exactly what you do. You turn your work over, because before, here we are, we finished, we're at the end. Now we're gonna turn it 
and that'll be the beginning. Now, make sure you don't grab that tail. We're done with that tail. Okay, so going back, S row two. I'm sorry, technically, according to the pattern, the cast on row and that first knit row we just did doesn't count. So we're starting with row one. Row one, we're going to knit four. And just try to keep your yarn snug so you have a nice edge. So we're going to knit one, two, three, four. Now, this is where we're increasing one stitch. The original pattern called for a yarn over. So we're going to do a couple of sections as a yarn over so you can see the difference. We'll do the yarn over and then we'll switch to a different style of increase and you can see the difference between the two and you can decide which one you like better. So all you do is you may, after you make your fourth stitch is you bring your yarn around your needle and over the top and it's gonna you'll see what it does in a little bit so now oh and here we are at these see these are the stitches that had the tail that is one stitch right there see that we're not gonna break it up and do two you just do it one so now we did our yarn over we're gonna knit to the end except for the last two stitches. So we're going to knit this, we're going to knit on down, we want to go to the end except for the last two stitches. So what I'm going to do is, here's one stitch, here's one stitch, I'm going to put my thumb on them, and I can push the work up as I need to, but I know don't go past that thumb. You know what? These might need to get out of the background. It might help things be clearer. And this is going to be the last stitch because we're not knitting these two. We're leaving them there. Now, turn everything over just like that. Move your yarn to the back. And we're going to knit all the way back. Oops. Just knit each stitch. Now, right here, see that? That's where we did the yarn over. See how it looks different? Just knit it like a regular stitch. And there we have it. One row completed. Now, turn. Okay, now we're going to do row two. And we're going to knit four. And 
we're going to yarn over and then we're going to knit until the last four. So the row, the row before, we didn't knit the last two. Now on this row, we're not going to knit the last two. So that leaves four stitches. So I'm going to put my thumb on those four stitches. One, two, three, four. And then I know where to stop. All right, so we leave those four, turn, move the yarn to the back, and knit all the way back. And there's our yarn over. See, it makes a much bigger, looser stitch. You just knit it like all the others. All right, row two complete. Turn. And this tail, we can cut this tail off. If it's getting in your way, it's we it is woven in, it's good to go. We're just gonna snip close to the work, and now it's gone. Alright, so now here we go, row three. We're gonna knit four. Two, three, four, yarn over, and then this time we're going to leave six stitches. So two for the first row, two for the second row, two for the third row, and knit the rest of them. And if you and here here's a little trick if you when you put your needle through and you go to yarn over your needle if you find your needle won't stay put pinch it and then yarn over and it's okay if it looks kind of loose go around your finger if you want to and then when you pull your needle through it's going to take up the slack pinch yarn over your stitch. Pinch it, yarn over, and make your slack. Two, four, six. So we still have six stitches. We're leaving on the needle. Turn everything over. Move your yarn to the back and knit all the way back. All right, that's row three complete. Is it row three? Yeah, row three. Now we're gonna do row four. I lost my count. All right, same as before. Oh, I need more yarn. Same as before, knit four, 
One, two, three, four. Yarn over. This time we're going to leave eight stitches. So two for the first row, two for the second row, two for the third row, two for the fourth row. So eight stitches. We're leaving, we're not going to knit. Okay, two, four, six, eight. All right, turn over and knit all the way back. The next row is going to have a change. All right, fourth row complete. Now, on the fifth row, so, okay. Nope, I'm not gonna say that. All right, now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cast off or decrease by four stitches. So what you do is knit the first stitch, knit the second stitch, Take the first stitch. You might want to pull down on the work a little. Put your needle in that first stitch and bring it over the top of the second stitch. So that's one stitch we've cast off. Now knit one more and do the same thing. Bring the second stitch over the top of the third, cast off two, knit one more, same thing, cast off three, knit one more, same thing, cast off four. So now you have four stitches you've dropped, you've cast off. Now, knit all the way to the end. And don't forget that the last two stitches look like they should be individuals. Remember these are the first, very first row where we were using the tail also. So both of them are one stitch. Knit it just like one stitch. And that's the last time you'll have to worry about those. So if you finished one section, well almost, turn your work and knit all the way back to the beginning. Feel free to back up and watch as many times as you need. Beginning knitting is a lot of mistakes. Alright, so now you have this little leaf looking section. And if you look at your this overall completed one, what you have here is one section. And we're going to do this 14 times because there are 14 points. So you should have on your needle 
14 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right. So turn your work. And we're going to do it just like we did with row one. We're going to knit four. One, two, three, four, and then yarn over. One, um, two, and this is the first row again, so we're not going to knit the last two stitches. Put your thumb on them. Push your work. You can use it to push your work. Alright, leave those two. Turn. Put your yarn in the back. And knit back. All right, so that was row one. Again, you're going to do it a lot. You, you knit the same section over and over and over. So now we're on row two, and we're going to leave four stitches at the end unknit. So knit your first four stitches here. One, two, three, four, yarn over, and knit to the last four. Two, four. Leave those four, turn, move your yarn to the back, and knit back. Oops. All right, turn. That was row two. Now we're going to do row three. Knit four. One, two, three, four. Yarn over. And this time we're going to leave six stitches unknit in the back. Two, four, six. Turn, yarn to the back, knit back.
All right, row four. Knit four. Yarn over. And this time we're gonna knit to the last eight stitches. So, two, four, six, eight. Once you get the hang of this, it goes real easy. It's all even numbers. All right, two, four, six, eight. Turn, yarn to the back, and knit your way back. Now we're going to cast off four stitches. Oh, come on. All right, so knit one. One more. And then take and pass this stitch over the top. There's one cast off. There's two cast off. There's three cast off and four cast off. Now knit to the end and back to the top. Peaches, settle. My dog is either pacing around or itching and she doesn't need to be itching, it's just habit. She's clean. She doesn't have fleas. She's just neurotic. All right, we're at the end. knit back. And if you're having trouble with keeping this yarn tight, or I should say snug, you need to work out a way to manage your tension with this hand. And here's how I do it. I wrap it around my pinky, and then over my index finger, and I hold it. And this way, I can control with these fingers the yarn sliding through. And it's really difficult to show that. You just have to practice. Alright, back at the top. Okay, so we've done one, two points. Now we just have to do ten more. This is where you start back over with row one. Knit four, yarn over, knit until the last two, and then you turn. So, I'm gonna fast forward to the last section and wait for you there. So you pause, rewind, start over, whatever you need to do as many times as you need to do it, and I will be there ready for you when you get there. Okay, I forgot I was going to show you another option besides the yarn over. 
So when you knit your four stitches and you're going to do the yarn over, another option instead of yarning over is to knit a, to create a stitch. One, the way that I like to create a stitch is to knit two stitches in one. To do that, you put your needle through, just like normal, and yarn over and pull it through. But at that point, instead of slitting the loop off, leave it on. Twist around and put your needle through the back of that same stitch right there. And yarn over again, pull it through, and then slip it off. So let's go ahead and finish this row and I'll show it to you again. So we're knitting to the last two. Turn. And knit back. Right here is that extra stitch. All right. Knit four. And then instead of yarning over, I'm going to create a stitch in the back of this stitch, just like that. And then keep knitting till the last four stitches. Two, four. Turn and knit back. Closer up to this. Slip through like your normal knit, yarn over, pull it through, twist around, and put your needle through the back of the same stitch. Yarn over. Pull it through and then slip that stitch off. And then knit to the last six. Two, four, six. Okay, turn. Yarn to the back. And knit. 
knit back to the beginning. Do one more time. Knit four. Now make like you're going to knit the stitch and pull it through and then twist around and put it through the same stitch just in the back. Yarn over, pull it through, and slip that stitch off your needle. Now we're gonna knit to the last eight. Two, four, six, eight. If you lose your place and you forget where you are, you can look and see they usually divide themselves up nicely into sections of two and you can see which row they were a part of. Let me see if I can demonstrate that. Okay, if you're looking here, these two stitches right here you can tell they're each one is part of a different row. See that? Or, well, not each one, but here, here. And they'll, they'll naturally separate, have a little division between them. Will help you, if you lose your place, it'll help you figure out where you are in the pattern. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, so now we're ready to turn. Yarn to the back. Let me zoom out. Because I have a terrible time staying in frame. Come on. When I'm zoomed in. Alright, we're just going to knit all the way back. I just did that wrong. No, no, I'm right. All right, now we're going to cast off four. Knit one, knit two, pass it over, and one stitch is cast off. Two stitches are cast off. Three. Four. And now knit to the end and back. Turn around, 
Now we've done two rows of yarn over and two rows of, I'm sorry, we've done yarn over sections and no yarn over sections. And you can see the difference. The yarn over rows have little gaps right there, see? The one where you add a stitch instead of yarning over has no gaps. That's the way I've done all of these. They have no gaps. If you do yarn over on all of them, then each row is going to have that gap. Which it just depends on how you, if you like the look of it with the gaps or without the gaps. So it's up to you how you do it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish. We've, we've done three now. One, two, three sections. So we've got nine more to go. I'm going to go ahead and do those nine and I'll come back to you when we're at that point. Okay, here is a helpful tip. When you're at the beginning of a section, if you're worried that you're going to need to rip out some rows and you don't want to rip out too far, you just want to rip out the section you just did, here's a tip. Get a piece of yarn that's a different color. Well, you can even use the same color yarn. But you want to, needs to be long enough, plenty long, to go there that far. Thread it through your darning needle. And then take it and run it through each loop on your knitting needle. Just run it through the loops underneath, wherever it's convenient. Uh oh, I uh, almost pulled it out. And just keep going. Make sure you're going just through the loop, not, uh, not through anything underneath. Just through the loop that's on your hook. Or on your needle, I mean. And they call this a safety line. What this is, is going to hold, it's going to just lay in these stitches. All right, so I got it through all the loops. I'm gonna hold this in to make sure I don't pull it out. All right, take your needle, needle off. So now you have a string through all of these stitches. Now just leave it there, just ignore it. Start your row. Don't catch it in your knitting. Just let it be there and lay, let it lay at the bottom of the stitch, see? See it down there? And just knit your row and make your section. Oops. So I'm going to fast forward to the end of this one section and show you how this safety line is going to help you. So I'll be right back. Alright, so we've made, we're almost ready to finish this section right here. Let's say you're knitting along, you're almost done and you realize, oh my gosh, my count is off, I don't have enough stitches, or I've got too many, or something else is wrong. And you're going to need to rip your work back. This safety line is going to save you. So normally, you pull when you rip your work back, pull your needles out, and you start undoing your stitches. And with this cotton yarn, it, it's easier to uh, find your stitches back but you can rip all the way back to this yarn and it won't go any farther so just yank it out and there there it is can't go no further than that so this safety line means that you can undo that whole section 
and know that you can get it back on your needle with no problem. So you just start feeding it back on. Without the safety line, you might rip it too far and go into this section. And then, then before you know it, you're just frustrated and you have to rip out the entire thing and start over. When I started knitting, I did not know about using a safety line and I can't tell you how many times I ended up ripping out the entire work because I realized there had been a mistake. So now, you're back to your base stitch of 14 stitches. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. And you can start knitting your section again. Okay, so here we are. We finished this section and we're back to the base of 14 stitches. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. And your safety line is down here at the previous row of the start of this section. But everything is good. You don't need to rip it out, nothing's wrong. So what you do is you just pull your safety line out. Put it back in your, re-thread your darning needle and then do it again at the current position. Just run it through the bottoms of these loops. Be careful not to pull it out. Just make sure you catch every loop at the bottom or the top or wherever. Just make sure you're not going into any other stitches. Come on. All right. All right. Now what? Oh, I got it. I'm around the nook, the hook needle. Okay. So, there we go. Oops. Be careful you don't pull it off your hook, your needle. So there we have the new the safety line running through the next base the base row for the next section. And just carry on. Make your section. This, this, the whole point of this safety line is so that if you make a mistake and you want to take the needle out and rip all the stitches back, you can do so without fear of undoing the whole thing. If you know that every section has been done properly and you're happy with it, then all you need to worry about is from this point forward for the next section and then move it every time until you're done and each and just take it one section at a time this one's done properly so do the next one and when you're satisfied that it's done properly pull the thread out and re-thread it through the loops when you're done the next section and so on and that way you never have to worry about losing control of your work if you have to rip out stitches and this will work for any size project. It doesn't matter how big or how small, you just have to have a long enough safety line and you'll be good to go. So all right, we're gonna carry on now and I'll be back when I've done all 12, 14, how many? I can't remember how many sections it is right now. Woo! Sorry, I had to double check, it's 14 points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got eight points done, so I'll be back when I have 14 points and we're ready to join the two sides. All right, so, <coughs> excuse me. All right, so we have 14 points now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14. 
So we're ready to bind it off and sew it together. So you're at the point here with your last section. You have, um, I ran out of blue thread so I had to switch to white. You've bound off your four stitches at the top and knitted all the way down and you're about to knit your way back to the top in preparation for another section. What we're gonna do is we're gonna stop. We're gonna bind off and then join these together, starting here and join them down and then pull this center section closed. So let's do the binding. So, it's the same way as you did each section when you would bind off four stitches and then continue knitting. We're just going to keep binding and binding and binding. So, knit one, knit another. Now slip the first stitch over the second and drop. And then knit the next stitch and drop that over top that one. And so on all the way to the last one. And beginning knitters, it does not matter if you take your yarn this way over the needle or if you go this way over the needle. All that matters is that whichever way you do it, uh oh, I forgot, I'm supposed to be binding off. <laughs> All that matters is that you do it consistently the same way. All right, last one. Oops. All right, last one. Now you want to have a nice long tail. Let me see here. All right, I'm gonna. This is way probably way too much, and that's good. All right, so what you're gonna do is keep pulling this thread all the way through and that closes that loop all right so we need to stitch these two sections together and you need your darning needle for that now if you look each edge has this nice braided looking let me see if it'll focus in on it. Right there. This nice edge looks like a braid. Same thing on this side. Looks like a braid. Right along there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna weave this tail through the braids. So all right, let's line them up. Oh, I made my camera jiggle. Okay. All right, so we're just kind of looking at this. You can see the braid right here. 
right here and it gets kind of lost but I'm gonna start right there oh something in my eye all right nope nope I'm gonna say right in that's too much right in here is the beginning and you weave this like shoelaces so we came up on this side we're gonna go under and up on this side so right there and then over and under I mean up on this side and you'll see where you're supposed to put your uh, needle just follow that braid follow that braid right there right now it's real loose I'll tighten it up in a minute If it helps, you can put them together like this, side by side. doing it left-handed that's let me turn it so I can do it right-handed that'll work so much better yeah much better Tighten this up. Probably should have done it sooner. That's all right. like doing it this way because I can tighten each stitch individually and uh, whereas if you pull it from here it tightens super tight here and then barely snugs up those at the back so I, I prefer to do it this way it's a maybe a little bit fiddly and time-consuming but it's not that big a deal. Oh, that's not it. It's this one. Yep.
right now we still get a few stitches here to do all right so this will be the last stitch for this seam right here Now we have to pull the circle together and if you lay it flat you see there are, let's zoom in a little bit, one, okay, see these little bumps here? What we're going to do so we're going to take this darning needle and run it through those bumps. You want to catch each one All the way back out. Alright, catch each bump on your needle. There's no exact science to this, it's just catching each one somehow so that you've got this basically a drawstring all the way around this center and then okay just like that so it's already drawn up some but you want to tighten it up any even more so that it becomes this sphincter looking middle. <laughs> That's a lovely description, isn't it? <laughs> All right, and then, and if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know I'm paranoid about weaving in the tails. I just know they're gonna wiggle out over time. Or even, I mean, over time, like 20 years, Okay, if the tails we uh, wiggle out, I I'm probably not going to complain about that. But if just a few months it comes loose, I would be upset. So what you're now going to do is weave this tail into oblivion. So just find a path. And I choose to do it, I stay in the center area where the stitches are kind of tight. Because knitting has a lot of flex and give. And if you weave your tail up through one of these rows and then it gets stretched, the tail is going to stick out. It's going to, the little end is only going to stretch. It's not going to stretch. And it'll start showing. So I'm going to stay right around the center here. And just go around a few times in and out because I'm using a contrasting color here you might see it you might not this is gonna be one of my rag bin dishcloths the ones that are the odds and ends of partial skeins um, I don't give those away or sell them I keep keep those for me alright so I've gone around a couple of times now Let's keep this on the string and cut down my tail to about right here. We'll see how this works. I'm going to untwist it and I'm going to split my strands here. There are four strands that make up this 
pull two of them out. All right. Now, I'm going to find one inside. And let's do it right here. Just pull those two strands so they're so now I can tie this in a knot around that stitch right there. If you can see it. And I'm just going to tie it tight. Oh, there we go. All right, you have just completed your first dishcloth. I hope it lasts many years for you. And you've also learned. Hmm? Yeah. Stop distracting me. I know I know what to say. I just haven't got there yet. And now you have the skill to make more. And they'll be excellent gifts. They're um, excellent dishcloths, hot pads, etc. Washcloths in the bathroom for you and for baby. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave me a comment and let me know if you've made this for yourself. If you have any pointers for my video, excuse me, for my video skills or the washcloth or anything. I like the comments. All of them are welcome, even the haters. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please give us a thumbs up and stay tuned. I haven't decided what next week's project is going to be. Um, I don't know. Oh, my husband says uh, underwear knitted out of fun fur. Which if you don't know what fun fur is, it's yarn that's fur. He wants me to knit him some fur underwear. <laughs> He's just joking. Anyway, stay tuned. We'll have another project um, for next week's video, but I don't know what it is yet. Thanks for watching.